What's good, guys? What's good? It's your girl. It's your hostess with the mostest faith. And I got the facts. That's why this channel is called Faith Facts. Today, we're doing a little bit of a different type of video today. And I will be talking about finals, especially junior year finals. But before I do that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Anyway, junior finals are hard. I mean, junior year has really kicked my butt this year with all the work that's been expected of me. But finals, past three, maybe four weeks, it's been final after final after final after final with no breaks. I think that all this hard work should not go to waste. So today we are looking at one of my finals for world literature. This year my world literature teacher decided to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing the regular essay or the regular oratoric speech, we did a lot of different things. There was a choice between doing a soliloquy, doing a one act play, and doing a recorded podcast based on one of the last books that we read this year, Macbeth by William Shakespeare. If you don't know, Macbeth is written by William Shakespeare. It's basically a classic and it's about a guy named Macbeth who's the right hand man to a king named King Duncan. But then one day Macbeth is approached by three witches and they tell him, hey, you're gonna be king. So he decides to kill King Duncan so that he can immediately become king and Lady Macbeth, his wife, is right by his side encouraging him to actually do it. But as the guilt starts to mount up on Macbeth and the lies start to come out, they have to kill more and more people. And then in the end, well, you're just gonna have to read the book for that. And throughout the whole book, Lady Macbeth is the little devil on Macbeth's ear telling him to do bad stuff so that they can get ahead in life. But this book is what inspired our sort of parody podcast of this. And me and my friend decided to call it, What's New Scotland? But of course, this is an English class, so we had to call it, What is New Scotland? Scotland's number one podcast in 1602, where we interview Lady Macbeth about being queen and see if anything tragic will happen to her or Macbeth. So I hope you guys really liked the video. It was super fun to make, so let's get into the podcast right now. Valorous morning, folks, and welcome back to What is New Scotland? It is Wednesday, June 2nd, 1606. And on the present day, we have the wonderful new queen, Mistress Macbeth. Her presence is co-equal, more graceful in person. The new queen, if it be true, then mind not introducing herself and telling the Harkers something we may not know if about thee. Hello, Scotland. This is thy new wonderful queen, Mistress Macbeth. And I has nothing to keep it from all thee, because I at each moment an homage to my own kingdom. One thing I can bid thee, guys, is that I am the most wondrous queen Scotland has seen. But is there something we don't know about thee? Hmm. I own a stable with the finest horses in Scotland, and those gents have proven to be the most obedient as they should be. Oh, alrighty then. Allow us to begin with some of the questions we are dying to hear the answers of. How has thee found this new position as Queen of Scotland? And what plans does thee have for us? We have settled into the role of King and Queen very well. As thee all has seen, my own husband doth take valorous care of this kingdom, and what many of thee don't see is how much I put it into it. As a queen, I doth just as much as the king and deserve equal recognition. Come to the future, I see many battles, but I shall have many victories. Well, Mistress Macbeth, I don't know if what yon means, but I hope that means well. Of course, at each moment the most wondrous for the kingdom. I hope so. Allow us to move on to another question. This one is about thy relationship with Macbeth. 
Many times, couples falleth out of love as they have to do with such stressful jobs. Has thy relationship with thy husband been affected in any way by thy becoming king and queen? Nay, nay, nay. If it be true, we are doing better. This position has strengthened our relationship. You all were able to see that we were eating dinner and he had one of those episodes. He struggled with those. However, you saw I was able to calm him down. My husband is often like this, but this he has been since he was a child. I help him out and he's instilled plenty of trust in me. Wow, that is strange to see we are doing so well. Of course, I could not imagine life without him. We like to doff this thing where we call one another dear and my love. The viewers have heard it here first. The king and queen are as joyous as could be. Of course, thy kingdom is being held together by a very powerful couple. That is most wondrous to hear. However, we must discuss King Duncan. The kingdom was so depressed to hear it about his death. It very much took a toll on the kingdom. Has the death affected Dai or Macbeth in any way? I was devastated to find that our honest King Duncan had been murdered in bitter cold blood. In fact, I was so shocked, Jan, I almost did faint. If it be true, if I hadn't been for Macbeth's discovery of the murderers, then this kingdom would be in pieces. I remember declaring to King Duncan, everything we're doing for thee, co-equal if it be true, to our doubled and then doubled again is nothing to compare to the honors he has brought to our family. We very much did love King Duncan and miss him dearly. Well, it was odd to see Macbeth automatically murder the servants. He was not king yet, and those servants were at the same level he was. Was there a motive behind killing these servants? Was Macbeth trying to achieve something else? Yeah, I'd be mistaken. Is possibly, is it? Is it even possible to be wise, bewildered, Hyklon, furious, loyal, and neutral at all times? My own husband was acting in defense of his rage over his love for King Duncan. He did act only out of loyalty and earnestness to the kingdom. He did see the gashes where the servants had cut off King Duncan. Then right next to him, he did see the murderers dripping with blood. Their bloodkins rudely did cover in gore. How could he not restrain himself? He loved King Duncan, and who had the courage to act on it, that then my own husband, Macbeth. Mistress Macbeth, these seem to be very upset, and I don't know with why. These are questions of the people, not accusations. Just settle down, miss. Oh, how can I believe you when at hour thou art accusing my own husband of the unthinkable? Well, if it be true of thy say-so, Thee and thy husband seem to be on edge. There was actually a rumor going around the kingdom that thee has been sleepwalking and seeing goats, particularly Banquo. Now, what was the reason for this? Does thy feel there was a cause to his murder? Wash your hands. Put it on your nightgown. Don't look so frightened. I tell you again, I tell you again. Mrs. Macbeth, it was just a question. Doth doesn't need for me to repeat it? Are they listening? Oh, aye, aye. Of course I'm listening. What are thee talking about? Does thy not recall what thy just did? Nay, nay. I've heard jump what thee said. Macbeth and I are stable and sane as ever before. It has never co-equal has an aspiration of an apparition. Banquo was one of our dearest cater cousins, and I would never fear him or any apparition if it be true or if I had seen it. Young wasn't about a rumor to go around then. I don't know if anyone would say such a thing. Death can be sore. I understand how you're feeling. Thank thee for finally understanding, Jan, the death of two of our most beloved and appreciated cater cousins has had on us, and how extremely sore that has been to make us shift this kingdom so well and so efficiently. Well, now, Mistress Macbeth, 
Jan endues us to our last question and the most important one. As we know it, the Herb Early is coming out and I want to know if, if it'd be true about everything Jan has did occur like these mysterious deaths and unnatural occurrences, Jan all tied to Macbeth. Does they believe he deserves the kingdom? Should he have a, a win, Jan, or are we jealous of it? To serve the kingdom? Aren't they crazy? My own husband is the only person to run at this kingdom. Thine is nay one smarter, faster, more clever, more charitous, more courageous, more brilliant, more genuine. Yon, me and I call me my husband Macbeth. With Macbeth's courage, we could not fail. Not at Dunson Day, not as a couple, not as King of Scotland, not at all. They don't co-equal the Zerva podcast. If it be true, you believe the trash Yon has half left from which ye speak. Wow. On your note, we shall best closing up today's podcast to allow Mistress and Beth to take a breather. I desire thee all did enjoy, and we shall see thee next week on What is New Scotland? Don't deserve a podcast. I'm out. Thank you, Lady Macbeth. Thank you. I hope you guys like that. I think my favorite part was when I stormed off and I didn't remember that I was just wearing random shorts under my whole costume. So I think that was pretty funny. But tell me what you guys think of this in the comments below. This was super fun to make and I'd like to know if you guys want to see some more stuff like this, you know, kind of parodies of classic novels. And while you're at it, if you didn't do it before, which I don't know why you didn't do it before, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this with everyone who you think would love this video. And I will see you later. See you, see you, see you later. Bye.